Hello everyone, Zero Fossil Fuel back. I would like to introduce you to the new electrolyzer tank. Uh, I don't know who first suggested this to me, but I owe him a, an extreme debt of gratitude. Uh, for six dollars at Walmart, you can get a nine inch tall by five inch diameter acrylic vessel with a latch that has a flip top lid and makes it extremely easy to do modifications to your cell and to uh, seal this thing up nice and tight. I'm going to bring you in a little bit closer here. Hopefully I can keep this nice and steady. All right, I've, I don't have the hinges attached, so I'm just going to pull the, pull the lid off. You can see it has a very, very nice uh, neoprene gasket around the edge to create a very good seal on the edge of the canister. And now we're going to take a close look at the reconfigured Zufer cell. Uh, let me see if I can get a pen here to point this out to you. All right. You'll notice this is the negative terminal now, and these plates extend down in between the original plates four and five inside the cell. All I did was bend them with a, a wavy pattern so that they fit nice and tight down in between these two cells and essentially short these out. There's no gas production between these two plates and that's fine because what that gives me is exactly the number of of charged plates that I want okay if I bring you in nice and close here you can see that this is the negative plate I have one two three neutral plates and the positive plate the center plate is also positive then I have a, a negative electrode here and then another positive electrode on the very end. I'll spin this around in solution so you get an idea of what the back end looks like and how I've connected that. Uh, there we go. Okay, you see the the uh, piece of angled material coming up off the center electrode underneath the strap that crosses the two end electrodes. They're all clamped together with the bolt that forms the stud at the top of the canister. Turn that back around, and I'll show you. This is uh, this solution is uh, sodium hydroxide again. I don't want to uh, muddy the test results with different electrolytes right now, so I'm going to stick with sodium hydroxide. I will later test potassium hydroxide, uh, which is in liquid form that I have, and I'll also do comparison tests with baking soda, which obviously is much more common. You probably find it in your own kitchen cabinet right now. Preferably, I'd like to use baking soda because that is the most commonly available material. We'll just see how efficient that is and how effective. Uh, I'll just give you a quick look down here, and you can see what the what the water level is inside. Just about covering the the tops of the plates. And this vessel, this container, this tank is sturdy enough where it may actually be. Uh, the final version of what I what I produce, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm debating whether or not to go with PVC and the four-inch threaded cleanouts and and all of the good stuff. This is pretty sturdy, very very uh, flexible, obviously, and uh, clear, whereas PVC is not, and readily attainable. It has all the attributes that I'm looking for in an electrolyzer tank. So uh, this may actually be the final the final version. We'll see. In just a moment, I will show you some gas production, and then we will seal it up and, and show you what the actual numbers are. Okay, now in this test, I'm using a regulated DC supply that puts out 13.5 volts. With the amount of voltage drop that I get through the test leads of the amp meter and my clip leads, the actual voltage reaching the cell is about 11 volts DC, and when I flip the switch on, it will draw approximately 12.5 to 13 amps with the concentration of, of uh, sodium hydroxide that I started out with. I may actually have to dilute this a little bit because uh, I, I accidentally started out a little bit too concentrated, but we'll see how it works out. Here it is. That's 13, that's uh, 11 volts, and we're at 13 amps right now. See it fills up fairly quickly. So less than 150 watts and uh, pretty pretty hefty production right there. And in just a moment, we'll show you seal up the lid, put my uh, metering device on it, and we'll show you just exactly 
how much gas that is. Okay then, stopwatch is at the ready. I'll put my hand on the switch. And on your marks, get set, go. See the current is at about 12 amps. We are running 11 volts. 20 seconds. Current is rising as the production increases. Velocity through the cell is increasing. 35 seconds. Forty five seconds, and there you have it. Fifty eight seconds, five hundred milliliters, one hundred and well, let me see here. Hold on a sec. Since we started at 11 amps and ramped up to 12 and a half, which is where the steady state seems to be, we'll call this an average of 12 amps at 11 volts for 132 watts. So 58 seconds, 500 milliliters, 132 watts. One of my comparison figures that I had from the other evening was 60 seconds, 28 volts, 10 amps for 280 watts. Um, for 500 milliliters. So double the production, double the efficiency, even more, even more than double. Uh, sure, because uh, twice 132 is 264. So it's still not quite the not quite the amount of power in and I'm getting equal production out. That should do it for now. Uh, I'm going to try a couple other experiments a little bit later, but uh, these are your production numbers for sodium hydroxide in a plus NNN minus NNN plus NNN minus NNN plus plate configuration, 90 thousandths plate spacing. And just to give you an idea of how repeatable these results are, uh, I ran a second test at the steady state of 12 and a half amps or 137 watts, five watts more, and uh, got a 500 milliliter production in 56 seconds instead of 58. I believe if you do the math, you'll find those numbers are very consistent uh, in terms of liters per minute per watt. Zero fossil fuel, signing out for now.